Hello ladies and gents, welcome to another video. First of all, I want to apologize for the poor quality audio that you're going to be having on this video. Currently it is 42 degrees Celsius in this workshop and I have absolutely no chance of doing anything if I've not got some sort of cooling. So I've got a fan behind me here and I've also got a portable air conditioner off to the side of me. And unfortunately the workshop is fairly small. As you may know, if you're a regular viewer, I work from my loft. This is my workshop and it's fairly small. So the fans and the air conditioner are fairly close to the microphones above me. And unfortunately, there's not a lot I can do about that. There's no way on earth that I can do any kind of repairs or even make a video if I've not got some sort of cooling because it's just far too hot in here. So apologies for the poor quality audio. But today we're gonna to be looking at a Nintendo Switch, which is actually just turned on. So this Nintendo Switch I actually bought from another YouTuber, Wayne, from Wayne's World of Repairs. Wayne is a very good friend of mine. You know, we get along really, really well. He's also a YouTuber, I've met him in person, and he's genuinely a nice guy, and I highly recommend checking his channel out if you like repair content. He's kind of a bit of a self-proclaimed noob. That's his words, not mine. And to be honest, his component level repair techniques and skills are, lot, are getting a lot better. And, you know, I highly recommend checking him out. If you want to go along on that journey with him as he starts to build his business, as he starts to learn more and more about repairs, not just consoles, but pretty much anything, then, you know, I highly recommend checking him out. There's a link in the video description to his channel where you can go over there, check out some of his videos and maybe subscribe as well. So he sold me this Nintendo Switch for £80 and that was including postage and it cost him, I think it cost him a tenner to post, so about £10 to post. So the issue with this switch is that it draws too much current when the Joy-Cons are connected to the switch. So that's the reason it's on charge now because it was completely dead when I went to turn it on this morning even though I fully charged it yesterday. So the Joy-Cons when they're connected is drawing too much current but when they're not connected, it's absolutely fine. Now that's an issue for a few reasons. It's fine if you're on the dock, but if you're playing it in handheld mode, then it's gonna drain the battery too quickly. And on top of that, if you're draining current too much, too quickly, then it's gonna be really bad for the battery long-term because you're rapidly charging and discharging the battery too many times. So it's a big issue. and We need to try and figure it out. It's a nice console. It's the Mario limited edition console and I really want to get this working because I do like this one. And when he first bought it, he showed it on a live stream and I really wanted it. And so, uh, yeah, when he offered to put it up for sale, he thought it was a little bit out of his level of expertise. So he offered to put it up for sale and I snapped it up. It's a really nice switch and, you know, for £80, you really can't go wrong. Just the housing and the Joy-Cons alone are worth £80, even if I have to replace the board on it. So it does turn on, like I said. But uh, yeah, it just drains the battery really, really quick. So we're going to try and figure it out. But if you are new to the channel and you like this type of content, then I would really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and turn on the bell notifications. And that way you don't miss any future videos. And if you do want to organise a repair, I do offer repair services. So head over to my website, consolefix.co.uk, where you can book in the repair and you can send it over for repair or you can drop it off in person as well. And if you do want to support the channel, then you can do so by heading over to Twitch and becoming a Twitch Prime subscriber. If you've got Amazon Prime, it's absolutely free and it does help out the channel. It gives me around about 250 for everyone that does it and I really do genuinely appreciate the support. It massively helps me out and to be honest, I need an ice pack. I need to go and buy an ice pack. I am dying in this workshop. So, yep, yeah, head over to Twitch, become a Twitch Prime subscriber. It really does help and you do get early access to videos as well. So with that being said, let's get into this repair. Today's video is sponsored by Atlas VPN. With more and more devices connected to the internet, companies are collecting information about us every day. Have you ever wondered why you search for something online only to get a seemingly random ad on the next video you watch? That's because companies like Google, Facebook, and even YouTube, they're logging every single click you make. With Atlas VPN, you can take back control, and right now you can grab a huge discount by signing up to the three year plan for just $1.99 a month. That's less than the cost of a coffee these days. Talking of coffee, if you're on public Wi-Fi in Starbucks, you might want to consider getting a VPN to keep that weird looking dude behind you from potentially stealing your information. Personally, I use Atlas VPN to not only protect myself, but also to watch movies and shows which are only available in the USA. Take that, Hollywood. I also personally use Atlas VPN to bypass a ban that Amazon put against my name and IP address because they think they're better than me. Suckers. 
Check out the link in the video description to give Atlas VPN a try today and start protecting your privacy online. Thanks again, Atlas VPN, for giving me some free money. Now back to the video. All right, so as you can see here, it is indeed charging. It's on 3% right now. It's charging at 1.06 amps at 15 volts. That's just over 15 watts. And straight away, as soon as I disconnect those Joy-Cons, we're at 0.87 amps. As soon as I discharge those Joy-Cons, uh, disconnect the Joy-Cons, sorry. So, yeah, it's rather strange. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep the Joy-Cons off for a second. Let's just, actually, let's just connect them one at a time. Now we get 0.98 amps there. 0.108, so around about 100 milliamps per Joy-Con. 0.98, 0 0.88. Okay, yeah, so around about 100 milliamps per Joy-Con. I would consider that normal, but we don't know what's going on behind the scenes in terms of the battery. So I'm going to get this apart. I don't believe it's ever been taken apart. I don't think he actually looked at it, which is good news for me because that makes, that gives me a better chance of actually being able to fix it. One thing I don't like about these is the fact that you get a black kickstand and black Joy-Con rails. Would be nice to have all red, but I suppose it does break it up a little bit. So my question here is, is it the Joy-Cons or is it the Switch? And to be honest, at the minute, I don't actually know. First impressions here, the board looks incredibly clean. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to get my thermal camera out. Straight away I'll get my thermal camera out and let's just see what goes on. So here's the CPU and we've got a fair bit of heat around here. A little bit of heat around here which is probably going to be where the display driver is. And then a lot of heat around the battery management I see. That's completely normal to be honest, that's at 75 degrees roughly. This is how hot it is in the workshop right now, check this out. Insane. 40 degrees on the surface. Incredibly hot. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to line these up so as they are ready to connect up. And I'm going to see if I get any kind of difference when I connect them up. So this one, the voltage regulator is down here. Let's just see if anything overheats doesn't appear to and uh, no that's rather strange so I'm not seeing much with the thermal camera I expect BQ to get hot 85 degrees Celsius that's rather interesting so if we just take that out of there let's see how quickly that battery drains so it says 345 p.m. that's the correct time okay um, within two minutes it's dropped down to six percent Let's just flip it around a sec. That battery's rather warm. Alright, so the fan appears pretty warm actually. That's rather odd. I wouldn't expect the fan to be 55 degrees Celsius on the core. Not seeing anything up here around M92 T36. 5% within, well, 2% gone within 3 minutes. So yeah, that does appear to be drawing battery pretty quickly, doesn't it? Let's pop that back on charge. I'm going to disconnect the Joy-Cons. So the interesting thing here is the fact that the fan is, or appears to be, constantly on. I don't know if that's because of the temperature of the room. It is absolutely sweltering in here today. But that fan shouldn't be constantly on. I'll get rid of the thermal paste because I don't want it all over my hands. There we go. So right now we're drawing 0.93 amps of current. Back on 7%. Let's just unplug that. So I'm going to get the board out then. I'm not too sure what the issue is going to be. So I'm going to inspect the board. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Joy-Con rails out. And I'm going to run the Joy-Con rails connected up with the board out. So I can connect up the Joy-Cons like this and then connect that to the main board. All right, we pretty much have a test rig here now. So 
basically what I've done here is just exploded the board a little bit in terms of what's connected to it I am going to get a test battery but I'm actually going to make one but right now it's time for a break because I am sweltering right okay so I've had a little rest but what I want to do is I want to make a bench power supply cable for the Nintendo Switch so I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that so what I'm going to do is take some stackable cables and basically I'm going to chop these up pretty much and I'm going to solder the wires to a Nintendo Switch battery so I'll start by just cutting the ends off the cables so these are stackable cables which is what I like but I need the ends cut off I need to be able to get to the copper inside didn't have to cut the ends but you know I could have just sliced into them but never mind so I'll just take the sleeving off be very careful if you're going to copy this don't get hurt from yourself and use a cable stripper if you've got one personally I don't have one so yeah I'm not going to be using one but never mind so what I'm going to do is carefully slice the outer cover off this battery making sure I don't pierce the battery so you can you can slice down the edge of this and expose the PCB so basically on the Nintendo Switch it needs this PCB to be able to detect the battery and also for the battery management as well so the BMS that's included on the battery is needed and there's some terminals here which are connected to the BMS I'm going to cut through those ow yeah that's exactly what I mean be careful just caught my finger there it's all good might need to pry the battery off to be honest not bothered about the rest of the housing I've got loads of them to be honest so I'm not bothered if I damage the housing on this you may be but I'm, I'm not yeah let's just take that out there we go destroy the battery just to get to the PCB so I'm trying to get access to these little contact points here okay there we go so now I can get rid of the rest of these like I said I don't need the battery don't care about that all I care about is this part here so we've got two contacts here we've got a negative and a positive which are marked on the board so you've got B plus and B negative or B plus and B minus rather so yep there you go so the way I remove these is just to use the soldering iron and I'll just flood it with solder and what that does is it will desolder it from the board there we go so you can see B plus there and then the same for this one we can desolder that and then we've got some nice pads to be able to solder to and then I can solder the wires to it so these wires are way too long I'm going to trim them down would help if I had some side cutters in fact I just saw them I thought I didn't have them, have them up in the workshop there we go it's a bit messy so I just want to solder the wires to the board I'll use some flux in a minute Give a nice solid contact on there and then on to the negative there we go and that wire is pretty hot so just be careful you don't end up burning yourself but that's that so we've got the wire soldered to it it's about as strong as it's going to be and there we go now I've got a bench cable for the battery so now I can plug these into my stackable cables
for the bench supply. There we go. So the one annoying thing about the bench cable, so having this as a bench cable, is I don't think I can power it on until I prompt it to boot. So what I need to do, in order to prompt it to boot, and I've got copper on my hands, never mind. So in order to prompt it to boot, what I need to do is move everything out of the way. And then I need to supply the power supply with four volts. So you can supply this with up to five and it will still only output 4.2 volts on the connector here. The logic on the board will take care of that, but you do run the risk of damaging it and it's not going to last as long because what I've noticed is the MOSFETs on here do get really, really hot because I've got to obviously switch a lot faster to be able to output 4.2 volts. So basically what we want to do here is just plug this in. I've got this set at 4, point, uh, 4 volts exactly. And then I'm going to prompt it to boot by just hooking up my USB-C cable. And that's going to activate it. Let's see if we can get this on the screen for you. There we go. So we've got 4 volts there. And you can see we've got no current draw at all at the minute. But if I just plug this in. I said if I just plug this in. Right, you will activate in a second. Or it should. So unfortunately at this point my microphone stopped working because my USB mixer overheated. It's something that I've been having problems with over the past few months. I do need to replace that mixer so I apologise for that. But for the next 10 or 15 minutes I am going to be doing a voiceover. The audio does kick back in a little later on so for now the voiceover will have to do. So it was at this point where I realised that the bench power supply wouldn't work unless I was using 4.2 volts, as you can see in the top right hand corner. And as soon as I prompted it to boot, we were getting around about 600 to 800 milliamps of current draw. The strange thing here was that we were still getting around about 400 milliamps of current draw when the console was supposed to have gone into standby. Now when the console goes into standby that means that it shouldn't really be drawing any current it should be in sleep mode or rest mode so that was obviously a problem it was still drawing current when the console wasn't supposed to be doing anything so it was a perfect candidate for the thermal camera at that point when using the thermal camera i did flip the board around and i did notice that there was a very hot spot on the bottom of the board in the right hand side and that was directly corresponding with the MOSFET which controls charging for the Joy-Cons. So we popped into the microscope and we used another little trick which can pinpoint the exact location of the shorted component. As soon as I got under the microscope I could visibly see that this MOSFET or transistor or whatever it is was visibly damaged. So very obviously we've got an issue there. But if we use some isopropyl alcohol and then we apply power to the system the hot point is going to cause the isopropyl alcohol to evaporate really really quickly it's pretty cool that being said remember what i said earlier about it being so hot inside the workshop well it got to a point where i actually physically started to shake so again another jump cut because i had no choice but to take a break before i ended up passing out and dying and then you wouldn't get to see this video after taking a break for about another hour, I managed to recover and dying is probably a bit of a dramatisation, but you've got to be careful and you've got to make sure that you look after your health, especially when it comes to overheating and heat stroke and things like that. But after taking a break, I removed the component which was getting really, really hot. As far as I'm aware, this is a MOSFET which controls charging on the Joy-Cons, as well as the amount of power which is being applied to the fan, which would explain the fact that the fan was on full speed. So I removed that component and replaced it with one from a donor board. But unfortunately, this board in particular is a HID CPU-10. And the only boards I had was a HID CPU-01, so I didn't have the correct MOSFET. However, after replacing that MOSFET, it was no longer overheating. It was no longer drawing too much current, and it was giving me a normal 0.008 amps. So 8 milliamps of current 
while the board was in standby, which is what I would expect. So the next step was to put the switch fully back together, charge it up a little bit and give it a test. With a break in between, of course, because again, I was overheating. At this point, the switch had got some charge in it and it was turning on. So I tested the Joy-Cons. They both did still connect at that point. But unfortunately, one of them, as you can see, was charging fine. And the one where that MOSFET was in charge of, <laughs> get it, in charge, ha, <laughs> I'll shut up now. The one that was in charge of charging that Joy-Con, it wasn't doing anything. The Joy-Con wasn't charging at all. It was still connecting, but unfortunately, it just wasn't charging that Joy-Con. Good news though, the audio is back. So back to normal fill, I suppose. Okay, so I've just looked and I haven't got any HAD CPU 10 boards. So I'm really hoping that this specific component is different to this one and that's why it's not charging. So I've left this charging for a little while. I mean, it's on 32% now, but it's still not charging that one Joy-Con. So yeah, a bit annoying to say the least, but yeah, I'm gonna get this back apart and just see what happens. Okay, so let's replace this component again then. So the reason I didn't take this component to start with is because it's not the same component. So it's actually a six pin on this one. And this does look like a MOSFET, so judging by the traces here, it looks like a MOSFET. I don't think that 6 pin really matters, so let's give that a try. Judging by how those traces are laid out, I'd say that's a MOSFET. Let's just give it a whirl and we'll see what happens. And if not, then I'm going to have to wait until I actually get one of those boards in because I don't know the part number. Maybe someone does, maybe someone can help me out. All right, it's time for the moment of truth. Is it going to end in a win or is it going to end in a loss? Okay, the Joy-Con connects. And now that one doesn't. Oh, that's so annoying. That's annoying. Well, it looks like I can't fix this until I get another one of those boards. That sucks. That absolutely sucks. But, you know, I will come across a HID 10 board which I can use as a donor sometime soon. I'm sure of it. They are relatively new boards, I think. But, you know, it's uh, it's just one of them things, unfortunately. There's not a lot that I can do if I haven't got the parts available. And unfortunately, because we've got no schematics, I don't know what part I need. So, I can't replace it. But... Yeah, I mean, realistically, I know it can be fixed, right? You know, it's not the end of the world. I know it can be fixed, it's just a matter of waiting for the parts to come. So, yeah, it is what it is, I suppose. But for now, it's partially fixed. It's not draining the battery anymore, um, or at least as far as I can tell. It does suck that I can't fully fix it right now, but like I said, they will come available sometime soon i'm sure i've probably got one of those boards in the workshop somewhere but yeah finding through finding through 50 boards or rather looking through 50 boards just to find one not something i'm doing in this heat it is absolutely painfully sweltering right now and i really don't want to stay in here much longer so that's going to be it for this video unfortunately it has ended up in an old fix for now if you do have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. I'll always do my best to answer. I really do enjoy reading what people think. If you do want to organise a repair, they don't all end in no fixes. So head over to the website, consultfix.co.uk. 
and you can book in a repair there or you can get in touch if you've got a question about a repair as well if you want to support me in any way then number one please get subscribed if you're not already and number two you can head over to twitch and become a twitch prime subscriber by linking an amazon prime account and then subscribing to twitch absolutely free of charge doesn't cost you a penny just a couple of minutes of your time but it does massively help out the channel there's also a Patreon link in the video description if you want to support me on Patreon or you can become a channel member by clicking on the join button below the video as well. Again, I highly recommend checking out Wayne's channel and thank you to Wayne as well for selling this to me. At a reasonable price, it's in fairly good condition and I'll get the money back just in the housing and the uh, Joy-Cons. So, you know, I'm not going to lose out on this. So definitely go and check Wayne's channel out, I'm sure we'll appreciate it. Wayne, big thank you mate, really do appreciate it and uh, until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.